everyone, and welcome to Unit 11, Mod 62, 63, and 64. Here are your learning objectives, and here is your vocab. So let's talk about aging and intelligence. So there are two types of studies. The first type of study that you need to know is called the longitudinal study, and this is actually review from our research unit. So longitudinal, think of the word long, so retesting the same group of people over a long period. So you test the same group of people in um, when they're 14, then you test them all again when they're 20, you test them when they're 26, you test them when they're 32, etc. So you're t studying them over a long period of time. So when we do that with intelligence, we find that up until very late in life, intelligence actually remains stable. And there is some problems noted with this because obviously some people unfortunately die earlier and younger than others. And when we remove that or when we um, adjust for that loss, the studies actually show that there's a steeper intelligence decline that especially happens after age 85. Cross-sectional studies, this is when you take um, a group of people in the same time. So let's say you start the test in 2020 and you take some 14-year-olds, some 18-year-olds, some 20, some 30, 40, etc. You take all those different age groups, whereas longitudinal, you're taking the same age group. This one, you're taking a bunch of different age groups all at one time and seeing the scores. So when they do this, they find that older adults give less correct answers than younger adults. However, they're not just comparing ages in this case, right? The people who were 50 and 60 years old, 70 years old, when they went to school, the schooling was very different and what they learned was very different. So you're also comparing schooling in different decades. And when we talked about the Flynn effect in the last video, we know that there is um, IQ inflation, meaning each decade it seems to be going up. And that has in large part due to schooling and industrialization. So two types of intelligence that IQ tests tend to um, assess, and that is crystallized intelligence. So think about it's like crystallized, it's like hardened. So it's like hard facts. So that's our accumulated knowledge. This tends to increase up until um, old age. So for example, um, our vocab knowledge, that goes up as we age, right? But those other things in this chart that are going down, like spatial visual visualization or processing speed, those are showing a decline. Um, not so much, uh, there's a big drop off though, right? If you look at around 70 plus or so. So that is fluid intelligence. So that fluid is our processing speed, being able to take something novel, like here's a whole new video gaming system and a new game, figure it out. So younger adults are much faster at picking up new things like that than older adults. Older adults might are better with vocab knowledge, for example, but they're not as good with processing speed. So it's also important to note that older adults have what they call wisdom, and they actually do wisdom tests, and this is our social reasoning. So think of like really complex, um, what you would consider like an awkward social situation. They are better at handling those. They are more aware of their limitation in their own knowledge. Um, and more like able to take on other people's perspectives or multiple perspectives. And so they have that wisdom to give us. So when we look over the whole lifespan, over the whole lifespan, before three, any testing isn't really um, a good predictor of our 
future abilities. But by age four, they actually do tend to be um, better predictors. And the older that we are, the more predictive they are of our abilities. So dozens of studies have demonstrated this. So why um, do they all, they all tend to find that um, intelligent people live longer? So why do intelligent people live longer? So there's a lot of theory. Um, the more education that they have, the better jobs. So they have better access to health care. They have um, more time in their lives to exercise, to eat healthy. They can afford more foods to eat healthy. Um, they are in more healthy environments. They're less likely to smoke or do other things that are bad for their health. Um and prenatal environments even could have a factor there. So, and then there's another theory that just says, well, their brain is wired well, and maybe their whole physical body is wired well is also. So in the extremes of intelligence, we have what's called an intellectual disability. So this is a limited mental ability that's indicated by an intelligence score of 70 or below. And, and the and is important, difficulty adapting to the demands of life. So that, for example, the demands of life could be um, difficulty with language, difficulty with literacy, um, difficulty with memory, understanding like the concept of money and the function of it, um, time, numbers, could be social skills and it could be practical life skills um, like maintaining an apartment or um, personal hygiene, all those kind of things. So um, on this spectrum is Down syndrome and Down syndrome is caused by an extra chromosome 21. So they have three chromosome 21 and it's on a spectrum, just like, for example, autism is on a spectrum, so it can range from mild to severe, and it's associated with physical disorders, and sometimes at birth there can be some issues with the heart or the intestines or other organs, and, um, but, you know, they live happy, fulfilling lives, and um, they have, if they do qualify, Anyone with an intellectual disability can get social services in the United States, um, and they also have some other protections. So, for example, in 2002, the Supreme Court ruled that the execution of those with an intellectual disability was cruel and unusual punishment. Now, obviously, as we've discussed, intelligence scores aren't perfect. And there are, you know, it does keep changing because of the Flynn effect. So there was a case in Virginia in 2010 where a woman um, had an IQ score of 72 and she was executed. And there was, you know, a lot of criticism and trouble with some, some situations like that um, because, yes, there's a line and is that, like, how do we, how do we handle that as a society? Um, a lot of industrialized countries do not have the death penalty, but the United States is one country that does, and so that's how they handle it. So on the other extreme of intelligence, Lewis Terman, who we brought up in the previous um, slides, he studied over 1,500 children in California with IQ scores over 135, so considered superior intelligence, and they kind of became known as the termites. And... While a lot of people thought that people with superior IQs would be um, kind of awkward and antisocial and not well-adjusted, they were actually the opposite. They were healthy. They were well-adjusted, successful individuals. They A lot of them went on to become lawyers and doctors and all that. There were some kids, and there were two kids in particular, who did not score high enough to become a termite, and those two two um, children went on to become Nobel Prize winners. So again, just showing you that the IQ score is a number and those tests are limited in what they are assessing. 
So we use twin and adoption studies, again, to study nature versus nurture. And when we study nature versus nurture, this term comes up again, heritability. And that is the amount a trait varies among the human population. So how genetic a particular trait is in human beings. Remember, we can't study it in just one person, but we can look up at intelligence across the whole spectrum of humans and say, is that genetic? Is it environmental? And so what they find is that people who are identical twins, they're virtually like the same person taking the test. Their scores are so similar. Um, with adoptions, they do have a correlation with their adopted parents. However, this is interesting. As they get older and become adults, the correlation actually goes down to zero. And what they found is our heritability increases as we age. So in other words, we become more like our parents as we age in terms of intelligence. Also important to note that intelligence is not just one gene where it's like, oh, I got the smart gene. It does not work like that. It, so many genes are involved in this. Um, it's polygenetic, so many genes. So envir en environmental influences are very important. And the key takeaway here, before I even go into it, is that environments that are not stimulating enough or they don't or are deprived in some way, those have a negative effect on the, intel the development of cognitive abilities. However, you can't speed up the process by giving your child a bunch of educational toys and make them smarter. Um, it doesn't work that way. So impoverished orphanages in Iran and Romania, they had, um, they just had too many children. And so there was minimal interaction with caregivers and that showed delayed development um, physically, um, but also cognitively. So that, that lack of interaction, lack of stimulation caused slower development. Um, even if you control for poverty, having less qualified teachers predicted lower achievement scores. So just having an environment that has caring, um, interactive teachers that are helpful to learning, that has a positive imp impact on a child's education, child's IQ. And like I said, key takeaway, deprivation can delay development, but the whole idea that like you can have your child listen to Mozart and become like ahead of the game somehow, or it can improve their intelligence, that is not based on any sort of scientific evidence. You cannot speed it up like that. So having a growth mindset obviously has an important influence. So believing that, okay, don't know psychology, but this is something that I'm going to work hard at, I'm going to learn, I'm going to figure this out. That attitude obviously is more promoting of kind of that grit mindset where it's like, I'm going to buckle down, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to figure this out. The brain's like a muscle. The more you use it, the easier those things get. So the more you work at school and believe you can do it, the better you are. So gender and intelligence, to boil this down, um, we're a lot more alike than we are different. So just like the idea that we're going to have totally different um, intelligence because we're two different genders is kind of silly, but there are some differences listed here. The evolutionary psychologists look at those differences and they say, oh, well, there's biological reasons and social reasons in our life priorities because of, you know, you're the hunter or gatherer, you're the cook. So that's what, that's why. But critics look at that and say, well, in gender equal countries like Sweden and Iceland, there's really not a gender gap in subjects like math. So there's a heavy cultural influence on the gender gap in terms of any sort of intellectual differences. So when we look at race, an important term to note, just knowing that there is a stereotype about you with a particular ability. So for example, 
um, people of color test better when the test is administered by a person of color than someone who is white. If they, they did a study where they took African American test takers and gave them a verbal intelligence test and they gave it to them right after Barack Obama's nomination speech or his victory speech. And those scores were much better than those who did not have that right before. So again, if you kind of think of that growth mindset factor, but the problem is, is that you can be African American and taking that test, a verbal test, and you can be a woman taking a math test and, and et cetera, and just believing or knowing that there is that stereotype can actually affect you, even though you don't realize it's affecting you. They did a study where they had um, women mark their gender before they took the AP Calc test, like the thing normally asks you, and then some people took the gender questionnaire after the AP Calc test. The people that answered the um, gender question after the test actually scored much better than the people that were asked it before. So kind of bubbling in like, oh yeah, I'm a girl, I might not be as good at this, had an effect, even if they didn't think that consciously. So takeaways, remember that aging impairs our fluid intelligence, not our crystallized. Intelligence is polygenetic, and environment matters a lot, especially deprivation is what can have the most um, effect, negative, obviously. And our perception matters. So believing that we are capable of doing well has a huge impact on how well we do. So that sums up our unit 11 and I will